This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Dev Saab, thank you very much for joining us on Talking Heads. Now let me start by asking you that for any actor getting an award is a high. But you have got so many in your life. So is getting every new award still a high for Dev Anand? Well, an award does give you a kick. It does give me a kick also because at that moment, it's a little bit of a stimulation to your own uh, creative self and you get ready for, for the next challenge. And though it never lasts longer, it gives you a feeling that people remember you. That's a great feeling for anybody, for that matter. Yeah. As long as it's a good award and a genuine award and given by people who matter in the world. So how important for you was the recognition by Hillary Clinton? There's an association called the International Punjabi Association that gave me an award and she handed, handed it over to me and I took it and it was nice meeting her and nice getting to know her. And that gave me an opportunity to to invite her to come to India and as a very, very private person. And she did reciprocate in her speech saying that she would after November elections. She would do her best to come to India with her husband and uh, with her daughter. Let's see. Did you ever think when you started off in Lahore that the journey would be so long and so eventful? You don't think of the future when you, you, you dive into something which is very marvelous and fascinating for you. It just happens and you start journeying. And the journey takes you from place to place and it never ends. It should never really end because your climax should never be. Once you reach a little summit, you want to go to another summit and to another summit and to another summit. And there are so many summits to cross. I still feel I'm a beginner. It's a fact. Whenever I start a picture, whenever I start a picture and I think of a film and I think of an idea that grows inside me and I want to plan, if I want to say something to the world, I'm excited like a child and I start let, letting it grow in my mind and I launch it and once it finishes it then I forget about it because it goes to the world for the world to discuss it and then I hop on to another one. But after climbing so many summits, after having so much to do, do you still remember those, those beginning days in Lahore when, when it all started? I think so. I think when you reflect backwards a lot of things that come to your mind. Your, your mind is a great big, big deep ocean. I look, you reflect backwards when you start looking for something which had happened earlier. But in my situation, the way I am in, I'm mostly involved with, what I, with whatever I'm doing at the moment, now. Because when I make a film, it's, it's my film in, in total creativity. I think of the plot. The idea is mine, the development is mine, I direct it, I produce it. If the role demands it, I'm, I'm doing the main role, I do the casting, and it's total involvement for 15, 16 hours that keeps me busy. There's no time to reflect backwards unless I certainly feel that I want to say something about myself in terms of a book or something, or people ask me a question. When I went to Lahore in the, with Atul Bihari, Mr. Bajpai, I think, all the past rushed to me like, like, like floods, floods, floods of, of great moments that I'd, I'd spent in Lahore. I went to my college and I saw the room where I went to see the principal and took my certificate and I saw the, 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 the hostel where I stayed and gave it the same thing. And it was a great feeling, it was after 55 years. But again, that passed again. The past is glorious, it's always beautiful, but I am not necess necessarily all the time dabbling and thinking of the past. I'm very much a present man, very much a now man, because I make films. And I, I just don't make films as an actor. I, the, the whole film belongs to me in, in totality, like censor, for instance. I certainly thought of censor. It excited me, it got me involved as a subject matter. I wanted to say something to the world regarding the Indian censorship. And I did the script, and I've just finished it. And it's going to be ready for release in October, and I'll probably hop on to another one after that. Do you still remember the days when you left everything and came to Bombay to join, to join your brother and, and to join Ipta? And those early formative years, they must have left a mark. When I left Lahore, I left Lahore 
wanting to plan a future for myself. And one definite plan was to be in the movies. I came specially for this. And it took me about two and a half years to get into it. And those two and a half years of struggle in Bombay, without knowing anybody, without having any letter of recommendation to anybody, I, I think I, I call it the most romantic days of my life. I learned. It was a greater learning than, than a college degree, because I was thrown into the crowds. And I was rubbing shoulders with humanity, walking the streets, tramping the streets, riding the buses, going by trains, making observations, starving, chasing girls, dreaming. Great. But when you make something out of yourself, I think then you start working on something that, that, that's a part of a dream. And the dream should never really be fulfilled because if it, when, when it, one dream gets fulfilled, another one starts, and another one starts. And this process should go on and on and on and on for men to be alive and excited. I think it's beautiful. I think making films is beautiful. Because making films is beautiful because you're giving a thought to the world, for, for the world to, to, to discuss it, to criticize it, to admire it, to either throw bouquets at you or to say, well, it's, it's all nonsense. But they're discussing you, and the thought belongs to you. When you started doing films, there was one thing which grew synonymous with Devanand, and that was style. I mean, your puff, the way you walked. It just happened because I was that way. I didn't do it deliberately, because people just liked it. And uh, I never thought people would like it. It just happened. I was cast in a film, and people saw me, and they, they liked me, and I liked it. Wouldn't you like the idea of being liked by people when people tell you you, 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 you look good on the screen? And then, then you start cultivating your, your, your style for, for better and better and better and better and better and better. So you became a star more than an actor? <sighs> well, when you're popular, you're a star. A big star is always, always, always a good actor. You cannot be a bad, bad actor and be a star. A big star has to be a good actor. There has to be something in, 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 in that person as his acting capacity to, 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 make him, to make him look like a star, be called a star. If you want to look at, the, at that golden era of Indian cinema, you had yourself, you had Dilip Kumar, and you had Raj Kapoor. I mean, this trilogy of, of Indian cinema is still so much, so much alive in people's mind. What was it about these three that, that you think of the imagination of the public? It's not for me to analyze, really. It's not for me to analyze. People must have found something, uh, some sort of a... Uh, you know, when, when an ordinary man sees somebody on the screen, an idol on the screen, that person starts imagining himself or herself as that person. So that, 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 makes, uh, that, that, that makes a star a star. Like, if I'm doing a good role and that, uh, that, that person in the audience says, look, I could be this man. If I was this man, it would be terrific. But how was the competition between the three of you? It must have been intense, because you three were the biggest. Three people in a huge country like India, I think, you need about 12 stars in a country, minimum. But I think we were all busy with our own work. Dalif was busy with his own work. Raj was busy making his own pictures. And I was busy with my own pictures. And then I started my own company called Navketan. 1951. They've said Navketan is one company which has gone on for 50 years to continue making films. You know, it, it, it has always produced films after film after film. What has kept you going on for so long? Navketan, people, audience, the feeling that they're going to, to watch me, the feeling that I'm going to say something to them, that they, they're going to listen, to, to, to look at me. It's a fantastic feeling. This is a fantastic feeling that you're going to make a picture on, on, on a certain subject. And it's your point of view that's going to the world. And the world is going to look at it and discuss it. It's a feeling that only that person can realize to the maximum who gives it to the world. So what do films mean to you? Because your films are always touched about social topics. Films is my profession. Films is my... My, my life, film is my, 
my my food film is is that keeps me going. If I wasn't making pictures, I think uh, I'd be like like a piece piece of wood. Because film films is my creativity. Films is my thinking. Film is uh, making a film is, is like like writing a novel that the whole world is going to see. A novel is read by by a few hundred, few thousand. A film is seen by thousands and thousands and millions and millions. That's the difference.